Like, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the five sticky, can get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like Feel right, that's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? What is up creatives, this is Tom, welcome back to another video. It is horrendous weather down in Brighton here today. I'm also a little bit sick as well, so I didn't want to go outside and shoot. So what I thought would be fun would be to basically shoot some cinematic B-roll of my editing setup behind me. I'm gonna take you through the process. I've got my camera rig right here, and I'm basically gonna walk you through each step of the process. I'm gonna shoot this entire thing handheld in 4K 60p using my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. And as mentioned, I'm gonna take you through each shot as I decide to take it. I haven't really planned this out in terms of a shot list, I'm just gonna kind of go with the flow, see what happens, uh, and think about some shots that I think would fit the music. I've already chosen a track as the music is pretty central to a little snippet like this. All right, so first shot, what I'm gonna do is sort of film some handhold glide, just handheld movements over some of the key sort of filmmaking elements uh, of my setup. So that's gonna be my hard drive. I might also just film a little bit of pickup of some SD card on my desk. Just also a super quick one, I'm shooting this super shallow. I'm shooting it on a Sigma 18 to 35 millimeter F uh, 1.8, but I'm also using a speed booster, so I'm gonna get this right down to F 1.2. Basically just means I can keep everything super, super shallow. So in terms of lighting, what I've got is a sort of blue uh, secondary light and I've got a key light over to my right and then I've obviously got these fairy lights in the background as well. That's basically the only lighting I'm using for this. It's actually pretty dark in here, but by sort of boosting that aperture on my camera right down, uh, we're gonna get a super silky depth of field. Next up, I'm gonna do a sort of glide along my keyboard. I'm gonna shoot this super wide angle, go right out to the 18 mil. Uh, still keep the aperture down at f1.2. Hopefully you should sort of get a nice skimming effect on the keyboard. And I've adjusted my light ever so slightly to mean that we should get a nice blue roll off of the image. So I tried to do a bit of this handheld, but I think getting close enough to the keyboard is actually gonna be a little bit of a challenge. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plant my camera on my desk and simply slide it along and hopefully that should increase the stability. There we go, I definitely think we've got that there, which is great. Now I'm just gonna do a couple of shots on the screen, sort of highlighting the actual thing that I'm editing, scans along or sort of sweeping slides along uh, the actual edit screen. All right, so I think I've got quite a lot of sort of up close detail shots. What I'm actually gonna do now is sort of take a little step back and just get a couple of wides of the setup. There's one in particular that I want to try, which is a sort of uh, rotating focus pull. So I'm gonna give that a whirl now.
All right, so now what I want to do is just do a couple of pickups on screen of actual movements on screen. So moving a couple of clips around and then also going up to export. I'm gonna mic my camera on a tripod for this part because obviously I need my hands to do the actual movements, but hopefully I can work it in in the edit to have these static shots amongst the handheld. I think the only remaining thing to do is just to film a couple of pickups of the rig and I'm gonna do that with this camera, the one I'm filming it on right now and then we'll just jump into the editing suite and we can sort of show you how it's finished off. All right, so I'm here in Final Cut now and I don't have time to obviously take you through each and every step of the editing process, but I am going to sort of call out a few key little points. Personally, I think that the editing is where a project like this really comes uh, to life. So first of all, I'm going to play this project or play this little intro sequence uh, without sound. And then I'm also gonna play it without sound effects, just so you can see the difference that the sound makes to the project. There we go, so that was obviously without uh, music. And then I'm also gonna do it now. I will turn off all these sound effects and we can just show you that as well. Like, ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like 550 on the fast stick, you can get high with me, that's a deal, right? Ride with me if you ride with me, you can slide with me if you feel like Feel right, that's a deal, right? That's a bet, right? That's a deal, right? That's a deal, right? So as you can see, that is a huge difference there. Personally, I think that the sound effects or the sound design is pretty much the thing which adds most to the project. As you can see, I've got quite a lot of transition effects. I'm also using, uh, as you can see, this like computer keyboard effect when the keyboard comes in. All of these things are kind of subtle, but really go towards the overall feel of the project. Then I think what I also wanna highlight is that most of the clips in this project, in fact, I think actually all of the clips in this project are shot or uh, shot in 60 frames a second and then slowed down to 50% in post. It really just helps give you extra flexibility in the edit. I would thoroughly recommend filming almost all of your clips in a high frame rate or as high a frame rate that your camera offers. Also when transitioning, as you can see here, transitioning between these two clips here, I have a bit of sound design sort of crescending in the actual transition, if you can watch here. I would mean if you feel like this whoosh really adds to the help of that, uh, adds to the style of that transition, just helps that uh, flow. And then I've also got a directional blur on each of these clips. If I click on directional here, you can see that this keyframes in, the clip gets progressively more blurry. And then on the other side, we've got a directional blur as well on that keyframes out to when the uh, little tool comes into focus. So just those little couple of quick tips for the edit. And then the other thing is just do not be afraid to use uh, the stabilization in your editing software uh, for Premiere Pro or After Effects, that's Warp Stabilizer. In Final Cut, This you just use the stabilization tool down here. Pretty much all of these clips are stabilized. As you can see, if I toggle some of these on and some of these off, it is cropping in slightly, but that's a perfectly good trade-off in my opinion. Throw on stabilization, mess with the settings and see what it gives you. There we go, guys. Hopefully you have found that interesting and useful. If you'd like to be taken through the edit in more detail, please just drop a comment down below or ask any questions about this edit. More than happy to answer anything that I can. And I will catch you guys next time. Thank you.